fellow paddleboard enthusiasts. Um, <laughs> that's you, uh, meaning YouTube nerds who sit there and watch stuff about gear. But in certain cases, uh, it's a good idea to watch some videos because some, I mean, some pedals, you know, like this puppy here, you know, three knobs, one switch, what can go wrong? And you want to hear the tone. Can you really tell what it sounds like? Hmm. You get an idea, you know, is it a high gain pedal or is it a chorus? But every guitar sounds different, every amp sounds different, you move the mic a tiny bit, you, you get an estimate but you don't really know exactly what it's gonna sound like in your situation. But it's an idea and you like to watch the videos. And that's what I do, so why am I bitching about it? But in the case of little helpers like loopers and switches and all that stuff it can get really complicated and putting a board together like this huge puppy here which is by the way two pedal bridge twos from Moen uh, fused together um, powered by two Moen MISO MISO Moen isolated power supply uh, MISO 8s um, it can get really complicated and that's where a looper slash switcher comes into play. Of course, looper, I gotta say this, in this case does not mean the uh, thing that records the guitar and then loops it. This is a pedal that has loops to put all your pedals in so you can control them with one controller and that's what the Moen GEC8 Live does and that's the top of the line product by Moen. And since it's so complicated, there will be a series of videos. Number one, this one, which is, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it, but not how to operate it. Then you'll see me put together this board. Right now the pedals are all kind of loose on it, or, you know, they're not wired up. And um, I will show you in, you know, time-lapse photography um, how I'm assembling this board um, with the GEC 8 Live all wired up and it's going to be one option of how you use it. It is so flexible that it's completely impossible to show you all the options of what you can do with the GEC 8 Live. G hard to say. The GEC. Can we call it GEC? GEC 8. It's the GEC 8. GEC 8. Okay, we're going to call it that because otherwise it's going to get complicated to say GEC 8 Live. The GEC 8 Live. Okay. And um, there are so many options of what you can do with the, the, this pedal or this switcher that it's, it's impossible to do a video for each. So we're going to go through a couple of things so you at least understand what your possibilities are. And um, I guess I'm going to come close and show you what it can do. So that's the start, and then we're actually going to do it, and then there will be a video manual um, where I really explain how to operate it, because it's not the easiest thing to program. Most of these switches are not. Um, so in case you have it or you want to get it, you can come back to that video and I will explain it to you. Okay? Because these manuals, they're always a little bit tricky, so I'm, I'm trying to give you the good manual. I'm going to grab this and come over. Hello. It's me, Henning, with the GEC8 Live. GEC8 Live. And how cool is this board that's lighting up with LEDs? I mean, that's very nerdy and very lame, but it's also kind of cool and unlame. So, you know, that's what I do. I light up boards. Okay, here we have the GEC8 Live. So let's look at what it does. Um, it has, let, let's simplify it for a second, it has eight loops, meaning eight times out of the thing and back into the thing, okay? Out and in. So in loop number four would be, to make it easy, one pedal. Let's say a distortion pedal. And when that loop is turned on, that pedal will go through the signal chain and when it's turned off it will not. Now where is the difference between just having all the pedals daisy chained into each other and turning them on and off? Um, very simple, 
the signal will always go through all pedals and also through all your cables. So no matter how true bypass and high end your pedals are, you will always go through, I don't know, you know, 10 pedals or whatever you have. And that is degrading your signal. So you might have to have a very high end cable chain and plugs and all this. Um, and still the signal will have to go through a lot of crap. Now with a looper like this, only the cables and pedals are active that at the moment you're using. So the guitar will go in, the guitar will go out, and in that case, really nothing will happen. It'll just go through here through a very high-end circuit. If you have two pedals active, the signal will only go through two pedals, which is preventing your signal from degrading. So that is good. I'm gonna take some distance here. Okay? And that is why you want a looper, but you also want it to easily switch combinations of pedals. You know the whole tap dancing. Now, you don't have to do this because it is saving on these eight programs, and you have a couple of banks, so you actually have several banks of eight. Um, so on program one, you would have, you know, just your overdrive, and on program two, you have the same overdrive, but with univibe and delay, and on program five, you have all these off and just, um, a distortion pedal on or something like that so you can build a clean sound a drive sound or whatever you want and switch just by pushing a single button that is very convenient um, what a lot of these loopers also do they have trigger outputs now what does a trigger output do a trigger output replaces your channel switch of your amp okay so your standard channel switch let me show you So here's the channel switch for my Laboga amp. Has channel and gain two. Okay, so that is a TRS tip ring sleeve stereo cable. And this has two trigger outs. So I could use, if this had, didn't have a cool function, um, uh, I could use just two mono cables to one stereo cable into the amp to replace this foot pedal completely and have this take over the switching functions. Now this has two out, uh, trigger outs, but it actually has five, and I get to that later. So this is what you can do with one of these. You can switch functions on your amp, channel, reverb, whatever, um, and if your amp only has a Dean input, which looks kind of like this, Will this focus? Okay, that's the Dean input right there. Um, you could either make your own cable to go from the quarter inch to the Dean. That is possible. You will probably find uh, schematics at the AMPS manufacturer's website. Um, but this can also actually change your AMP with a Dean thing, but it would have to be configured at the factory. we get to that. So, um, front panel you have eight switches for eight programs which is very neat you're also able to control all eight loops directly with those eight switches in a special rehearsal kind of mode um, then you have a mute button uh, which will also engage the tuner output so if you want to tune you can actually mute everything and go to the tuner um, and then you have a bank switch, which only rolls the banks upwards. So there's no bank down. Some pedals have bank up, bank down, um, which might be considered a negative. But considering that you have eight programs, which is a lot to begin with, okay? <clears throat> and um, you have the option, you have 10 banks that you can set up. 10 banks times eight. That's a lot of programs. You have the option to reduce the amount of banks that it scrolls through. So if you actually only have two banks, you can say only use two banks. So every time you step on that, it goes from bank one to bank two, bank one, bank two. Now if you're using four banks, it goes one, two, three. Now if you want to go back to bank one, you have to hit it twice. So it only goes forward. Um, could be seen as a drawback, but considering that it has eight switches 
I'm thinking I might probably never use more than two banks. Okay? So, this is neat. Um, the LEDs above this, uh, the switches, which, by the way, are not like the clicky kind. See? They're not like the hard, press them hard down, click kind. Uh, they're more like triggers. Um, they light up to show you what loop is active in rehearsal mode and which preset you have active. But these little lights up here, let me get closer. These lights up here, they will show you the loop program status. So they'll show you what loop is programmed. Um, then you have what foot switch is active. So what, or which one of the two trigger output is active. This MIDI light will show you that you're in MIDI programming mode. And these two outputs, yeah, there's two outputs, will show you which of the two outputs is active. Because there's actually, as you can see here, yes, there is stereo out. Okay, now that is extremely neat. Let's go through the back. Well, the cool thing about the live is it's got MIDI. It can send program changes from one to from zero to 127 on that is a little bit limiting only two MIDI channels so you can select MIDI channel 1 through 16 it is up it is fixed to MIDI channel 1 and 2 that is a limitation that I don't personally personally like but if you you know set up your your devices to correspond to that it's acceptable let's put it that way so there's your MIDI output on the version I have, this is a second MIDI output, which sends exactly the same information. Now, why would we want two MIDI outputs? Isn't that stupid? Hmm. What if you have a guitar pedal that has a MIDI input, but no MIDI through, and you want two pedals to be controlled? There are these types of pedals that only have a MIDI input to switch a program, but maybe because of the pedal size or the manufacturer didn't want it, they don't have MIDI out or MIDI through. So you can't pass on the program change information to the next pedal. In that case, you actually have a second MIDI out, which is not too bad. Now, I exchanged a whole bunch of emails with uh, Steve from Moen, and we talked about this because it doesn't say MIDI 2 on it, which I think it should. It should say MIDI 2 slash foot switch um, because it can be one of the two. In my case, it is MIDI, a second MIDI output, but as you can see, it says on here foot switch external. And that is kind of a cool function because it actually could be replacing um, a channel switch on your amp. Okay, um, Internally, back here somewhere, um, it would have to be wired up depending on what your amp will uh, need for switching functions. So you would have to talk to Moen and they would actually make one specifically for you. In this case, this wouldn't be a MIDI output. This will become your amp switch. And now, if your amp only needs, you know, one or two switching functions, you can, it would replace foot switch one and two. But up here are loops six, seven, and eight. Okay, they are separate loops. And as you can see, uh, I can't remember what that's called. The, these two can be used as um, a, uh, a foot switch as well. So you would be losing loop number six, but you could be using you'd be losing loop number six, but you'd be using it as an extra foot switch. And same thing, same thing. So you could have five trigger outputs, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Um, but you'd be sacrificing three of the loops. So it's either an extra trigger or an extra loop, depending on what you need. And so if you're using this as your foot switch and it would actually switch five functions, um, you'd be sacrificing three of the loops and would only have five. Um, but that shows you all the amazing flexibility that the GEC, GG has, 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 has um, but you'd have to 
contact Moen about that possibility. Here it's a second MIDI out. Now let's look at the further controls. You've got the tuner out, which is you know pretty straightforward. Go out to a tuner, signal never returns, you tune your guitar. Here's the emotion. That's that's such a you know I've been working with a couple of Chinese companies now and they do this. They give things names that don't really make sense. Um, because they think it's so Western and so cool, and um, it sometimes really isn't. It's the emotion input. Um, in this case, it has nothing to do with emotion, and we get to it in a bit. Um, so we got foot switch one and two. Those are the trigger outs. Why does it say TRS on that? Tip ring sleeve. It's really cool. There are two mono outs to go to two mono switches. But what if you switch, which is actually the case in most amps, is a dual switch, like this one. And it, it uses a single cable. Well, it uses a stereo cable, that's what I call it, but they're called tip ring sleeve. You know those little, um, actually, this is what they look like. Why am I explaining this to you? Come on, focus camera, focus. It's not focusing. Tip, ring, sleeve. Can you see this? Tip, ring, sleeve. Okay, and if your foot switch uses that, all you have to do is plug it into foot switch one. It will deactivate foot switch two and foot switch one output will be one and two in one cable. So you use a stereo cable like this going into your amp which also accepts tip ring sleeve and now this one cable carries the information for foot switch one and two at the same time that is neat because on other um, uh, loopers I had to use a an insert cable which is actually two mono cables going into one tip ring sleeve cable okay and then we've got a buffered in buffered out and non-buffered in. Now well, that's kind of neat. The pedal is buffered. Buffering is generally a good idea to keep long cable runs from degrading your signal and some people buy an extra buffer. Some pedals like Boss Tuners have a buffer built in. I reviewed the armor buffer from Dr. J which is actually a nice one with built in a boost. But this has a buffer built in, so if you want to make sure all your, uh, I don't know, impedance crap, I don't know what that's about, is correct, go into the buffer in. But there are some pedals that don't like buffered signals, I heard. Like, I think, Wawa pedals, which would come before this anyway. Um, or um, uh, fast faces, I think, really don't like buffered signals, they just don't respond to them well. Uh, in which case, you could actually go into the non-buffered in, okay? Um, and you can go into the buffered input which will run through your loops. Um, you could also go into the buffered input, buffered output, go somewhere else. So you have options to route your signal any way you want, okay? And as I said, there's a lot of options and we really can't cover them all. Now then it's relatively simple. Loop one, send, return, SR, relatively simple. That's a mono loop. And loop two, loop three, uh, which, where am I? <laughs> loop three, loop four, and then comes loop five, which has a mono send but a stereo return. Cooler, because what if your chorus or your delay, primarily probably delays and reverbs, come back stereo. So, you have the option of sending mono, coming back stereo, and that stereo signal then goes directly to the stereo output and you could go to a stereo amp, which is very rare, or actually to two individual amps. Even sounds cool if they're different amps, makes it more stereo. I tried it, very nice. So the very last loop of the series of five is stereo going stereo out to two, two different amps. Now what about these other three loops? They are completely separate. They're not in the normal signal chain, which means you would go into loop number six with a separate cable, 
then loop in your pedal or whatever you want and then you go out again these three aren't even behind each other they're completely separate okay so let me demonstrate <laughs> Moen also sent me these very high-end looking patch cables look at this that looks really neat I got two of them okay very neat so what you would actually have to do if you just wanted all eight loops behind each other let's say in mono you go through loop one through five and then it comes out of the output so you would have to take the output and go into loop number six so you actually have to patch it on the back I have to admit I kind of would have liked a let's call it normal looper where the output automatically goes into six unless there's something plugged into this input so this way it's internally wired but as soon as you plug in here it's breaking the wiring and then you can use these separately so that way you wouldn't have to wire it on the back because now I'm actually going to have to connect the looper to itself it's a little bit of a drag but I guess we can get around it now if I want to put loop number six into loop number seven I will actually have to take the output of loop number six and go into the input of loop number seven and then you know you hide these these cables in your pedal board and I guess you're okay so and then the same thing from seven yeah let's do that from seven where am I seven to eight see now six goes into seven seven goes into eight now why is this that you can have these three loops completely separate well you could have one or two or three in your um, what do we call it in your FX loop on the amp now what if you only want one in the FX loop and seven loops in front of your amp now with this you can do it okay so you would actually just have out to in and then six and seven and that goes to your amp and then loop number eight would be in the FX loop um, which is very nice you could have these three in the FX loop you could have let me think what else could we do um, oh yeah you could actually have uh, five pedals in front of your amp you could have one pedal in the FX loop of your amp but then you could have out number two okay which would also be these five pedals um, in the uh, going to a second amp because you have a, a second output going to a second amp with these two loops in the FX loop of the second amp so this could actually control the FX loop of one amp two amp and go into two different amps now that is neat I mean that's a very complex setup and who of us has that but you have the option of actually putting pedals into one FX loop a second FX loop on a different amp or well, maybe you actually have an amp that has you know some high-end amps have a um, parallel and serial FX loop okay so this puppy could be loop number six could be in the parallel FX loop like a reverb or something and these two or one of them could be in the serial FX loop of the amp so a lot of options you could also say well I need to switch my reverb on the amp and those two are already uh, triggering the channel on the amp um, in this case you're using let's say loop number eight as a trigger output and it has a trigger output function uh, latch and momentary as far as I can tell these two are both latch type what does that mean that means that it's pretty much like being holding the on position like stepping on the pedal holding it on or hold or leaving it off it's not sending one impulse saying on on it's saying on okay that's 
And you can't change that, sadly. Uh, on these, I think you have the option. Anything else we need to cover? Well, MIDI, okay. Oh yeah, that stuff. Of course we need to cover more stuff. Um, there's MIDI, which is a little bit dicey when you want to program it, um, because this display only shows one digit, okay? So MIDI, as we know, we all know that, it's going from 0 to 127, and how do you show 127 numbers with a one-digit display? Well, they're pulling it off, but you have to memorize things, and it's a little bit... Yeah, you really want to want to program your MIDI um, to get to get to do it, but it's possible, and it's uh, I'll explain it to you, and you'll get it. It's no big deal. Um, so you can send two program changes on channel one and two, only channel one and two, um, and it can also send um, it can also send uh, some continuous controllers. It can send continuous controllers uh, to like do the tap tempo um, to bypass your sound, but it's nine continuous controllers and they're preset to match Strymon and uh, Eventide and primarily Strymon. Now I think this is um, it's a nice feature but it's an underused feature. You should be able to actually send any continuous controller you want with any value and uh, limit it, limiting it only to Strymon is actually really limiting it to uh, its MIDI use as a continuous controller pedal. Uh, it's a nice, you know, gimmick, but uh, it's not, it's not fully developed, and I think, um, I think there's more potential in this pedal than is realized at the moment. Um, and as we can see with the foot switch, because it doesn't say MIDI two, uh, there's some, some afterthought. There's some, we developed this pedal, and then ideas came up, and then alternative ideas for this, and um. At the moment, they are still kind of fi figuring out what this thing can do, and uh, they haven't. They have released it and haven't really realized its full potential. And they're adding on features, which is nice. I mean, there's more stuff coming. There isn't even everything in the manual that this thing can do. Um, which is where the emotion plugin uh, plug comes in. That uh, is now being used for the shadow button. So with the pedal, which is kind of, I'm going to call it asinine, that's kind of stupid. With the pedal comes another pedal, with an extra switch. Which should have been, you know, pedal should have been a little bit longer and it should have been right on here. There's really no need to have this somewhere else on your pedal board with the function that it performs. But as I said, it was an idea that they had later for this input. I think it was supposed to be maybe like an expression pedal input or something. And they had a cool idea. So it comes with this, which is a very sturdy aluminum switch with like brushed metal on top of it. It's nice. Green LED. And it comes with this short TOS cable, very high end. Um, and while we're at it, it also comes with detachable feet, which screw in. So you don't have to rip them off um, when you put Velcro on it. You can always put the feet back on. That's a nice detail. And um, so you plug in this pedal into the emotion input and it enables you to program a shadow preset. Now it gets tricky. A shadow preset can be a different setup of triggers and active loops behind any of the presets. So let's say we're on preset 2, okay? And I push this button a different version of preset 2, a completely different preset if you want to, is stored behind this. So each of the eight buttons will actually be able to be a whole other preset. Okay? That's kind of neat. You could also program this to, um, to send a continuous controller. You could program this to send 
a tap tempo out of one of the trigger outputs if your delay pedal accepts external tap tempo. Way cool! Or MIDI tap tempo for a Strymon. Um, there's a lot of options for this and um, there could even be more with more uh, continuous controller options but as I said there is a second preset hidden behind each of the presets. So technically there's 16 presets on bank 1 alone. The 8 that you can switch directly and a shadow preset behind each of them. Um, programming it you have to use a noggin, you have to use a brain because it's something about X or and then when loop 1 is on and you push this but then loop is on on the shadow preset it will turn it off. I lost you? Good, because I lost me too the first time. I will explain all this in the video manual. So if you want to watch this get some coffee because it's gonna be long. Um, oh, what else are we missing? That, 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 that shadow preset yeah, okay. I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, setups that they have in the manual so you can see some of the options. Okay? Okay, yeah. let's finish this overview. Um, back to the Gek 8 Live. Um, in the manual, there's a couple of options uh, just, you know, showing you ideas on how to wire it. And, um,. I'm gonna put one up here somewhere so you can see it and I have to look at this myself. Now the first option that the manual shows is um, where you have three individual channel switching inputs on the amp. Uh, probably very unlikely but maybe there are amps that have that um, and in this case you would use foot switch one and two outputs um, for channel 1, channel 2 and then you would use in this case loop number 6 as another trigger out which leaves you 7 loops and um, in this case very simply uh, all 7 pedals are in series but 1 through 5 and then we go out of the output into loop number 7, 6 is blocked for the trigger into loop number seven which is going into eight which is then going into the output uh, is the output to your amplifier so out on this thing doesn't necessarily mean go out to your amp it might mean go out of this signal chain into another signal chain so we got seven pedals in front of the amp and of course you would have to bridge as the diagram shows right there somewhere um, from seven to eight out and in which Hmm. I kind of think there should be a switch for that, but you have to bridge it. So, let's look at another option. Of course, they're saying if the amp has a stereo input, you can use a TRS cable. We already covered that. Signal chain, what do we have? Seven mono pedals on one stereo pedal and two amplifiers. Okay, since the stereo pedal will have to be the last one in your chain because loop number five is going to the stereo output. Um, you'd have to actually wire it six, seven, eight and then one through five which for me it can it's probably a little bit confusing okay because one for me is the first pedal, so it would be a compressor and two would be a drive or something. So I'm thinking, you know, linearly. But um, in this case, you would go through six, seven, and eight, six, seven, and eight on top first, and then go into, in this case, the... Ah, okay, I see how they're doing it. So you're going into the buffered input with your guitar, you take the buffered output into 6, which is going into 7, which is going into 8, and that's going into the non-buffered input, and that's running through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 is the stereo pedal going into your stereo output. So you have 8 pedals in a row, but 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That would be the order. And, of course, you can use the uh, shadow preset switch or the emotion switch, which is this one, um, for 
shadow presets, which is kind of nice. And um, you could be going to two different amps or a stereo amp. Okay, and the last one would be five pedals in front of the amp. That's simple, you know. Go into the buffered input, run through five pedals, go out into the amp. Relatively simple, probably what I'll be doing for the board that I'm building. And then we have three individual... Um, <laughs> then we have three... Uh, loops that will be in the effects loop. So from your effects loop you go into loop 6, you bridge 6 to 7, 7 to 8 and then back into the effects loop. So this will be your, your effects loop chain, three different loops. Um, and that is it. Pretty straightforward. Of course you could switch anything, your amp, your pedals, whatever, with MIDI, which is neat. Um, I forgot to mention one thing which is neat, which is very nice with this. There is a rehearsal function, which means you can not choose to have any programmed loop. You can just choose to trigger, the, switch the loops on and off like you would switch on and off your pedals by pretty much going into the program mode and holding this. And when you're in program mode, you have the freedom to switch any loop on and off with switches one through eight with the downside that you are actually in program mode. So as soon as you're leaving program mode, whatever you left there is saved to the preset that you were on previously. Hmm. hmm. It's not really rehearsal mode, it's just a program mode. But it's a convenient one. So what I would suggest is leave program number one to be like, like your floater program. It's always different. So if you want to go into rehearsal mode, go to program number one, hold this button down, then you can switch any pedal on and off, like you're, you know, stepping on your pedals, uh, one through eight, and then when you leave this, whatever you left is on program number one, but because it is saved. So, um, if you're still game, there'll be a little slideshow now showing you a lot of different nice angles of the things so you can actually get a good look at the buttons and not at the, at the ins and outs and not just me doing this. Um, and uh, the next will be me building the board and putting it together, which I'll be doing right now. And that's in the next video. See you there if you're still with me.